everyone, welcome back to Amy Answers number, is it 19 or 20? 19. And the first question is by Speechy Girl. She says, I have the same brooch. Have you ever experienced the pearls or crystals falling out of your Chanel brooches? That is why I haven't worn mine yet. Girl, you should definitely wear yours. Um, I have not experienced any fallouts. Obviously, I'm kind of newer to the Chanel earrings and brooch jewelry because I've only started buying them in July this year. Um, I have been told because I asked, my essay said that Chanel did revamp the glue that they're using on, you know, setting the crystals and the pearls. So there should have been an improvement to not having as many fallouts. The way I see it is I am aware of the risk, I suppose, and I will wear them carefully. I think with brooches, it's probably okay because I don't know, unless you're napping on a sofa and you're rubbing your brooch against the sofa or you're constantly hugging someone and it constantly, you know, get knocked by something. I don't see why it should come out unless it's really poor quality. For earrings, that's the thing, like just don't wear it in the shower, of course, and um, put them in last and take them out first. Uh, try not to sleep on it, whatnot. And all those things might, you know, all those things really help. And if they do fall out, then just bring it into your Chanel store. I think that is the reason, that is more so the reason why you should really wear them because if you don't, then you don't know if it will fall out. If there was a defect or there was, you know, unstable setting, then they will fall out more quickly. If you wear them, then you can get them fixed more, you know, faster and you will likely not get charged for getting them fixed early because they're still new. If you wait too long and then something happens down the road, they might not have the spare parts anymore and they might not even you know, allow uh, free repair and whatnot. So I, I say wear them and just enjoy them. And if anything happens and you deal with it then. Suzy Suzy, do you have a lot of wear and tear on your gold hardware of your bandolier strap where the bandolier strap is connected on the Speedy B? I already have some wear only after four months. So I'm not sure how often you wear yours. I don't know if you wear yours on the daily basis. I definitely don't wear mine as often as I probably should. I actually haven't worn it yet since uh, quite a few months. I don't know if you can see the underside of this. There's maybe like a little darker spot, but that's so minor. It like, it literally, like I, you probably won't even see it unless you examine it. My deering looks fine. I mean, it may just look like a tad darker than everywhere else but that's normal because there's metal on metal contact there's some like hint of gray also on the clasp this is my pochette mitzis by the way so it's just normal wear uh, like i said if it's black bring it in but if it's just like a i don't know if you can see it it's really hard to capture on camera but uh you can see that there's a little bit of grayish. I've worn this bag a lot, so if anything, this would be a better indication of like the actual wear on the hard hardware to hardware. Uh, my Speedy, not so much. I would say unless it's like black, because I have heard that some people actually see their D-rings completely black, and that's probably not normal and i have heard that people just bring it back and they get you know there's fixed or exchanged leah ang can you make suggestions as to if i should go with the push and this or the neverfull mm in red or rose balloon on my birthday this coming september by the way i'm all a demi eben girl i have an alma speedy and favorite in demi eben it's so tough because these two are my favorite bags um like I said, Porsche Mitzis has always been my top favorite like holy grail bag from my collection because I just love how easy and um, like the compartments inside just make sense. They just really work for me. The only thing that's making me a little sad right now and frustrated sometimes it's the wear on the on the side where the um, where the the flap and the 
strap and the hardware touches. That's the only sort of flaw I would say that is with this bag. You don't necessarily see that happening at the beginning when it's newer, but I've had mine for almost three years now and <clears throat> I've, you know, I've had my issues with this bag. Uh, so it's really hard because I really recommend both. I would say if you have you know, if you know that you don't want to deal with any glazing issues, I say avoid the Burchette Mitsis. Rose Ballerine or Red, they're both really great colors. I personally prefer the red because I'm not so much of a pink girl. I can do like really dark fuchsia pink. Both are great choices and I, I don't think you'll regret it, you know, as far as design and how they will look on you. They will look great on you. But just think about whether you are going to be okay with glazing. Um, with monogram bags, you just have to sort of learn uh, how to adjust to Vaquetta. Just uh, make sure that you sh just make sure that you watch my Vaquetta videos on how to take care of them and how I have been sort of you know uh, treating not treat I don't treat my bags, but how I've been you know sort of maintaining them. Uh, really, there's not much maintenance other than not do anything, let it patina, and uh, just don't wear it in the rain as much as possible, especially when they're new. Jessica C. Hi Amy, I wanted to know when your Holistically Amy channel would have new videos. I am really looking forward to those. I really wish that I could just post them on this channel. I just know that there are uh, viewers who, and I got feedback from you guys, uh, a lot of you are telling me how you prefer if I just kept it with you know, my sort of fashion and lifestyle and like handbag videos on this channel because uh, you find the holistic health part or the holistic health videos not as relevant, which I can understand. Like I understand it from a viewer's point of view. As a creator's point of view, it just makes it a little bit more challenging to, uh, you know, focus. So I will try my best to come up with videos on my other channel uh, and I will try to post my very first video in September which is already, uh, we're already in September I suppose um, and I will say I will, you know, I will probably, I'll still work really hard on the other channel but it will be more raw you might not necessarily see me with makeup on not that I have a lot anyway but like you will see me more like on days that I'm not feeling so great and I'll like just talk about it it'll probably be more chatty I'm not sure I'll have little projects here and there because I know I'll be inspired to sort of talk about certain subjects that are relevant at the time for me please stay tuned I know it's been so many months but I will do my best and I will I will have to like post at least one video in September. If you guys have any ideas uh, as to which kind of first video you want me to you know, make, just let me know down below. I will listen to you guys and I will do my best at making those videos for you guys. Serena Monster, do you still have your Never Full? I have been looking for an updated video. Uh, yes, of course I do I've, and I highly recommend that bag so obviously I still do I will never not have a Neverfull in my collection so I definitely still have it and I still highly recommend it and since you ask I will you know put it on my list of to do and do an updated wear and tear and review Kim Chi Chi Chan Hi Amy, how secure do you think uh, the uh, Palm Spring is for travel? Would the straps come undone with the button fastener when you yank or pull? So, I believe you're talking about these little thingies. And I know that uh, one of my viewers also responded, but I just wanted to like talk about it. These things, these little knobs and ball thingies are so difficult to take apart, especially at the beginning. It does soften over time, but... Um, at first, it's really, really stiff and you will have no issues traveling with it. I don't think anybody can really yank this and and make it, uh, you know, come apart very easily. But so basically, there's a slit portion and then there's a hole portion so that each hole, there's like a hole and then a little slit. But the slit is so new. You want to just be pulling on where the slit is. So because the slit is on top of this, you just want to be pulling from there and then it easily comes undone. 
especially when you've already used um, the setting prior. Even after you've used it for a while and you've tried several settings, I don't see how it would be so easy to just yank it open when you're you know using it during travel. It's just it's not it's just not that convenient I think. And in terms of here, I mean it's your normal sort of clasp. If anything, I would be more worried about this coming off because somebody can just easily if they have like a very swift hand try to like unhook it from the d-ring but really from here I, there's no issue cape cod bell i saw you decided to sell your chanel boy was it too heavy for you it looked great on you and i wasn't sure why you decided to let it go it's been such a roller coaster journey with chanel for me and one of the challenge that i have especially if you are canadian you would relate I don't know about the rest of the world, but uh, there's a big difference between how Canadian stores and American stores are. In Canada, all we have only a select number of boutiques, very limited, and not all the big cities have it. So their policies are very much more severe and stringent and strict. There is no refund whatsoever. So if you buy a bag, and you want to return it, you only have 14 days to do so. You can return it for store credit, but that's pretty much it. And with the price tags, I don't know if it's that easy for anyone to have to sort of make a decision on which first bag to get from sh because I decided to get a Chanel bag in my collection again. Um, it's just a challenge because, you know, of course there's all the variety, there's all the classics and there's the seasonal, but the classics are just so expensive even though classics are probably the wiser choice as a first Chanel bag because you know that they will be relevant for a long long time. When I bought my boy, I had to I guess I did all that research prior and I decided, you know what, I'll just go with the boy because it's considered a classic now, It's um, it has a great mixture of trendy and classic and um, I think I love it. But in the end, I got it, I was excited about it, but it just was a bag that sat on the corner and never did I want to reach for it. So that was the reason why I sold it. There's a bunch more reasons and I already did a video on why I sold mine because I wanted to answer all of your guys' questions about it. There's really nothing wrong with a boy bag or with that boy bag either. It's just me personally, it just wasn't, I guess it wasn't me because I didn't reach for it. And honestly, I reach for my LV or I reach for like my twice bag and I was so happy to reach for it. And since I didn't feel that way with the boy bag, um, for all the reasons where which I will discuss, um, I, I just felt like it was time to go. And like I said in my previous Q&A, I just feel like if it's something that you will not reach for and it's just gonna sit there and you know that you don't have that love, it doesn't give you butterflies and whatnot, even though it was so like the excitement of going through the process of acquiring it and working hard at all the researching and stuff, sometimes you only realize it once you get it. And because it is so difficult in Canada for you to, I mean, 14 days is not long enough for you to know whether this bag is really for you. And I don't plan on getting that many Chanel bags to be very honest. I'm hoping I can get maybe two. Uh, so to have one that sits in the corner and not be used and I don't feel the love, I don't feel like I will reach for it, it's just not me. I just had to, I had to let it go. Jennifer Moran, nice bag Amy, it's definitely on my radar. I know it's still pretty new to you, but how does it compare to you twice? Which one would you use more? And she's talking about this one and my twice. This is just so playful and so fun. You can dress it up, dress it down. But twice is so classic. And for me, twice is easier to use, easier to access, uh, easy to make it dressy uh, or not dressy. And it's, it's perfect. It's just the perfect bag. I love the lining on the twice. I still reach for my twice more, I would say. But this is just a nice change. And since I have it now, I can rotate 
and not use up my twice so much not that it not that there's any wear on my twice there's literally no wear on my twice other than the leather you know giving a little bit more you know it's a little bit more softer not as hard as before the leather is amazing on my twice by the way i i still highly recommend the empreinte leather twice but the fact that i'm able to rotate this and the other bag i just feel like both will last longer and you know i can if i feel like dressing up more fun or more casual then i will wear this one uh, but the twice is good for all occasion and i still would if I can only have one, I would still get the twice over this one. Hannah Rosen, I have the Palm Spring Mini backpack on hold. Could you tell me if you've seen the reverse monogram version? I can't decide between the two and was wondering why you chose this one over the other. I have seen the monogram uh, reverse one. So yeah, I think it's the whole bag reverse, which has the sort of caramelly color reverse monogram. And this was the this normal canvas. And I, I did see both. I still chose this one because this just looks more classic. If your wardrobe is more playful and you like to be different, I think the other one is great. Uh, the other one was also a little bit more expensive. I just prefer the look of this. It just matches my wardrobe a little bit better. And I think if I got the other one, I would have been able to rock it too, but I just probably wouldn't reach for it as often. Fashionably yours 23. I sold my four key holder because of the glazing issue. But I miss the functionality and I'm con contemplating repurchasing it. Do you think the glazing issues are inevitable with this item? Have you had any problems? This is my six key holder, which I, I've had since 2013. And I seriously love this SLG. I don't have that many SLGs. But this one I use every day. I haven't had any glazing issues. There is a bit of wear, but it's not, it's not peeling. I will say that the newer ones, they have been having a lot more problems and I know a lot of you who bought the newer ones that are made more recently, especially the ones with the different colors inside. I've heard that the glazing formula has changed. It is very disappointing and what I can say is that glazing issues will be inevitable, especially with the newer things, if that makes sense. Like I said, I don't know if it's every item or if it's just the lower end item. I don't even think so because the push-up mitts is quite expensive so I don't see it as a lower end but maybe because it's such a high in demand bag uh, I don't know maybe that affects it you know having to produce it more quickly and whatnot I, I just I don't know but all I'm saying is if you decide to get it and I have to agree with you that functionality wise it's great I cannot imagine not having you know a six key holder in my life either this one or another one but i really love this one uh so i say get it but i would say yeah it would probably be inevitable if you really can't deal with that i say don't get it but if you really love it that much then you just have to you might just have to deal with it if if the glazing comes off easily or quickly you just have to bring it back in get it reglazed meg g hi amy another awesome video was hoping to get your opinion on the new new model emprunt PDB 25, I just love the look and I'm concerned the size 25 will not fit my Erin Condren planner. How do you find your size 25 speedy in regards to space? I personally think that the, the size for me is big enough. Like, I really, the speedy 25 is just one of those much, very surprising in terms of space. I don't know how big your planner is, but I can tell you the Speedy 25 has more space than my Borchette Mitzis, has more space than my Trapeze in the small size. Um, it's possibly possibly more space than my Alma PM, if not very, very, uh, very comparable, except that the PM, I mean the Alma, they, they do taper up. The fact that it's only a 25 and it's still fits more than all of the other bags that I have, I say that it's quite big. Now, the only concern I have uh, is is the opening of the zipper. With the empreinte, which is great because you can open it all the way to the where the straps are hooked on, so you will have a, little, a much better opening 
fitting your planner in. I don't have any issues with space with mine other than the zipper opening. I think if you're really worried, then maybe go with the 30. I do love the size 30, 25 though because it's just it's just a great all-around size. I know I can fit my scarf inside, my flat uh, never full pouch, and just all my SLGs including my Emily wallet. So I know it will fit all that. And I know I will fit my um, the medium size planner, which is this one. This is the MM size, uh, comparable to the MM agenda from Louis Vuitton. And I know this will fit um, very easily. So I say go for it. I think the new Empreinte Speedy is very beautiful. I like that it has a side pocket. I always find that very useful because you don't keep you don't have to keep opening or opening your bag just to reach for your phone or like your bus ticket and whatnot so i do love that feature one last sort of inquiry on instagram i believe that's why i almost forget um is how the strap the new strap that i got the bandouille fits on my uh no way and i don't know i have to say it looks kind of cool this bucket size with this is the pm size it's just a tad big for crossbody but you can pull it off it's really cool actually. I think for travel, if you don't wanna deal with it, this is ideal. And as a shoulder bag, it looks like this. So that's it for this week's Q&A. Thank you so much for all the great questions again. Let me know if you have any more questions for next week and I will talk to you again very soon. Bye. Here's a look at the strap with this bag. Like I said, I wanted to have this strap as a multi-functional strap.